In more ways than we realize, lithium powers modern life. Lithium batteries power our smartphones and devices, pacemakers and power tools, taking innovation to new heights on a wider scale than before. Lithium is essential for advancing how we get from here to there, for a smoother, more fuel-efficient ride, for protecting crops, improving health, even cushioning your morning run. Now, lithium batteries are helping to power the electric vehicle revolution, driven by a growing list of countries who've announced bold regulations to take the internal combustion engine off the road and go electric, supported by major new subsidies and incentives. The result? An expected tripling in demand for lithium compounds, helping to power the batteries that power the growth of electric vehicles. All of which raises a few fundamental questions, starting with, where will all this lithium come from? This is lithium, in a variety of its material forms. The secret of its success? Lithium is the lightest of all metals, but it's also the most energy dense, which makes lithium the ideal material for lightweight batteries and other modern marbles. But you won't find it outside your door. Lithium naturally occurs here, in the salt flats of the high Andes mountains of Argentina, Bolivia, and Chile. Known as the Lithium Triangle, the area is home to approximately 50% of the world's identified lithium resources. Lithium-rich brine is pumped from underground into ponds, then concentrated with the natural evaporating power of the sun, creating an energy-efficient, lower-cost process that is also sustainable. But it doesn't happen overnight. It takes several years to bring new brine production online. To construct new production from a brine source generally it takes up to four years to do source mapping, drill your wells, run pilot tests, and understand that you feasibly have a source to produce from. Once you understand that you have a feasible source, you need to build your infrastructure, construct your plant, run commissioning trials, and start to run the plant at steady state. Easily that could take another four years. Lithium also comes from hard rock mineral deposits, primarily in Australia, Canada, and China. Unlike brine, Hard rock mineral deposits of lithium involve energy-intensive mining operations and higher variable costs. In order to extract lithium from hard rock minerals, you generally have an open pit mine. Once you extract the ore from the open pit mine, there are a number of energy-intensive steps required to crush and concentrate the ore into an ore that can be shipped long distances. Then that ore is processed further with other energy-intensive processes in order to turn it into compounds that customers can use. Compared to brine, the variable cost of the production of lithium compounds from hard rock is considerably higher. There are many more steps and it's much more energy intensive. That's where lithium comes from. But how does lithium go from here to powering all the things that power our lives? That's the next question we'll answer. Let's start with the base compounds. We call them base compounds because they typically have less stringent performance requirements, despite requiring significant capital and know-how to produce. Lithium carbonate is the most widely used base compound and is expected to represent 42% of the lithium market in 2027. Lithium carbonate has given longer battery life to millions of people and their portable electronics and phones and powered the first generation of electric vehicle batteries. Lithium carbonate helps improve the manufacture of ceramic glazes, porcelain enamels, and glass, where it lowers the melting temperature and increases strength. Next, there's the base compound lithium chloride, which is forecasted to grow to just under 6% of the market by 2027. Lithium chloride is critical for air treatment and purification applications. These base compounds form the building blocks for a range of performance lithium compounds. Performance compounds, like the name suggests, have more stringent performance requirements. Lithium hydroxide is the one getting a lot of attention of late. According to forecasts, it's on its way to becoming the largest part of the market, for good reason. For electric vehicles, lithium hydroxide's chemical and physical properties are crucial in achieving the electrochemical performance and longevity of these high nickel content batteries. This means that the manufacturing of lithium hydroxide must meet very high standards, especially when it comes to purity. Cathode, battery, and automakers' expectations of raw material quality are getting more stringent and more customized than ever, especially as the battery technology advances. 
Lithium hydroxide is also a very important raw material for high performance grease applications. Recent surveys show lithium greases enjoy over 70% of global grease production. But that's not all. Butyl lithium is used for synthetic green rubber applications, including fuel efficient tires, asphalt modification, and other advanced polymers. It's essential for specialty pharmaceutical applications that lower cholesterol and treat cardiovascular disorders. Butyl lithium is also an important ingredient for making agricultural applications that help to protect the food we grow and eat. Finally, there's high purity metals. This performance lithium compound is critical to the strong, lightweight alloys that move modern transportation forward. High purity lithium metals also power non-rechargeable lithium batteries for household, medical, and military applications, and in the future, next generation rechargeable batteries. There's a bigger picture to all of this. It shows us that performance lithium compounds are expected to grow at a much faster rate than base lithium compounds by more than 20% per year over the next 10 years, increasing to an estimated 53% of total lithium consumption by 2027. The big reason? The growth in electric vehicle adoption and shift in battery technology to battery-grade lithium hydroxide that this guy was talking about. So where exactly is the electric vehicle market headed? Buckle up, we'll show you. First invented back in 1859, the internal combustion engine is headed for a well-earned retirement. But can lithium-powered electric vehicles, EVs for short, really take their place? Let's look. EVs have managed to gain a respectable foothold over the past decade. But it's during the next 10 years that we'll start to see truly impressive EV growth, eventually reaching more than 60 million EVs sold in 2040, according to forecasts. There are four major reasons for this bullish outlook. First, more and more countries are taking steps to take internal combustion engines off the road, partially or fully, all within the next 20 years, from Norway to Germany to India to France and the United Kingdom. And don't forget China, the biggest EV car market in the world. There, EV adoption is being driven by the comprehensive Made in China 2025 initiative. On top of these kinds of regulations, many countries plan to roll out a range of regional subsidies and incentives as well. A second reason to feel bullish? Changing consumer preferences. Consumers are becoming more eager to take part in cutting down global greenhouse gas emissions, and EVs have made strides to make it easier for them to do so. Reservations regarding EVs, such as where to charge them and how far they can go on a single charge, are being addressed. And affordable EV options are now an offer at almost any new car dealership. Which connects directly to the third item, new technology. Advanced battery materials will enable widespread EV proliferation. In fact, most major OEMs have announced the development of self-driving fleets over the coming years. Last but not least, there's reason number four, drivetrain electrification. In the next five years, Ford, GM, and Fiat Chrysler plan to develop multiple types of EVs. By 2025, 100% of BMW's cars will have an EV model available, as will Volvo and Peugeot. And Audi, Daimler, and Volkswagen are right on their emission-free tailpipes, along with the rest of the world's automakers. And at the heart of so many EVs that hit the road, there'll be one of these, a battery powered by a performance lithium compound like lithium hydroxide. But how do these batteries work and how will they keep evolving? Let's move on to the next section to find out. This is a lithium ion battery a technology that powers the lives of millions each day thanks to its lightweight, high energy density and ability to recharge. Like all batteries, it has two electrodes inside, one called the cathode and the other the anode. The positive electrode is the cathode. Lithium compounds are the material of choice for the cathode. About 90% of lithium used in battery production is consumed here. Lithium ion is a workhorse inside the battery. Lithium makes less than 7% of the weight of the cathode material and only a few percent of the cost of the cell. But the cell cannot function without lithium. On the other side is the anode, the negative electrode. It doesn't currently contain any active lithium. A porous layer called the separator is placed between the cathode and anode, and the battery is filled with a transport medium called the electrolyte. 
About 10% of lithium used in battery production is consumed in the electrolyte. When the battery is charged, the positively charged lithium ions pass from the cathode through the separator into the anode where they are stored. When the battery is discharged, the lithium ions travel back from the anode to the cathode, and the electrons travel in the outer circuit where they are converted into electrical current for powering this, this, or a day out doing this. To increase the range of EVs, today's most energy-dense lithium-ion batteries are manufactured using increasingly nickel-rich lithium cathodes. Lithium hydroxide is a critical component in the production of high nickel-containing cathode materials. Nickel, along with manganese and cobalt, is being used to create lithium lead transitional metal oxides. Simply put, the housing for lithium ions. Using these materials with higher nickel content substantially increases the energy density of the battery and improves the driving range of the vehicles. Where does the technology go next? In the future, additional lithium demand might be driven by solid-state lithium batteries made up of high-energy density cathodes and solid electrolytes, for which lithium metal would be a material of choice. Solid-state batteries are expected to be safer and have higher energy density. Pre-lithiation of anodes, a way of mitigating the loss of lithium during the first charge, could further expand growth opportunities. And new applications in the battery might require innovative forms of lithium to be produced, such as lithium metal powders or printable lithium products. It's a future bright with possibilities, a future powered by performance lithium technology, and the once-in-a-generation shift from fossil fuel-powered cars to emissions-free electric vehicles, a future that's right outside your door.